Hi hey guys, Mr. Director Logic here. I fucked up this worksheet twice now, and I can't stress this enough. And I'm so glad I post these videos out because two main points, like I appreciate, I sincerely appreciate you guys giving me the comments that you do, maybe on Discord, WhatsApp, or even in the YouTube comment section or whatever. I genuinely appreciate the help you're giving me. Help me help you. I love it entirely. Okay, moving on from this. Okay, so for this, as many people pointed out, what is the main scientific reason of having so many models? Like, I okay, I can't come up with an absolute answer, but these are the two main reasons what I would give, given that I have to answer this question. It's the precision to eliminate human error and to be able to repeat the process of pipetting over and over again. So that's my first reason. And my second reason would be to be as precise as possible because no one pipette can do it all. And there's going to be like uh, mechanical errors. Or there's no perfect pipette. No perfect pipette. Wow, just saying this out loud, I, you can generate so many ideas. Okay. So yeah, those are like two or three, maybe even four of my main reasons what how I would answer this question. But yeah, more or less, this is how it goes. Okay. So for this one, it's easy. Um, all you got to remember is that... Um, from the previous video, I don't know how many of you saw it, but 1,000 microliters is equal to 1 milliliter, as you can see right here. And this is the equivalent, because I looked this up, as to right here, the 10,000 pipette, which is actually 10 ml. I don't know, I saw that somewhere. Yeah, 10,000 UL. And I'll probably, hang on, I just converted UL to ml. Come on. There we go, 1,000 to 1 ml. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, this is what I would give. Think of the uh, L20 as the max, and then you work your way down from there. So one being like, like 200 would be the max. So 187 would imply this, and 200 would say that, and then that. And then 300 was a little tricky, but like I said before, it's the max, and so you work your way down. Now, provided I gave that explanation, this might be a little tricky, but you would think of this like 100 being the absolute max, and then you would work your way down. So since this is zero, we take that off like the thousands place. This would be in the hundreds place, and this would be in the tens place. So you gotta think of it like it's grade three or grade four math. And then, yeah, you would just simply work your way from it down. That's simple. This is not to be meant to be confusing, but it tripped a lot of people up, and that's okay. That this is all for clarification. Okay, and then for here, I, and then yeah, some people ask me how I chose particular ones. Basically, I used the PDF for reference. I wasn't able to tag the PDF into the YouTube video. Go figure. But, like it said over here, 2, 10, 20. And then this is what I would use as the reference to give me better clarification as to how I would number it. So, for um, this one, I would say, since this is 16, I say 20 since it's the closest. And then I chose 100 for 38. There was no 50, so I had to pick that one. Uh, for 280, I picked 300 because that's the closest one. You can't go 200. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two L200 max. 200, so 300 next. So for 800, we had to go with the 1000. The 10,000 sounds so extreme. <laughs> okay, this might be the most confusing thing of this all, but essentially, all in all, this has five milliliters all together in total. Okay, and so when you would work with your concentration, it would be 100, then 10, then 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, and then yeah, that's just the sixth one, okay? And then 4B and 4C tripped me up and tripped a lot of people up. I'm not bl pointing fingers or blaming anyone, but this was confusing as all hell. And I'll explain how this what happens, okay? So basically, we only this only happens one time. You make the mistake just one time by having an extra thousand okay so this is why the dilution factor is like this is because if we go here and i need to specify what a dilution factor is so this is the dilution factor the um initial volume well vi divided by final volume so for the dilution factor of 10 as we have determined for all the previous ones for 4a it was 500 ul over 5 ml i'm pretty sure all of you figured it out and just like that 10 df now this one was a little different because it was 1 ml and then 5.5, because the what we transferred was 1,000 microliters, which was 1 milliliter. 
and the total volume happened to be 5.5 milliliters and this is why it's 5.5 now the mistake that I made in the previous video was that um, yeah I confused this with 5.5 assuming that this process repeated twice don't do that that's a correction okay and so going back on that note this is the correct answer so what would be the final answer that would be T5 and that would be T6 and now for C this C was really tricky this yeah since if you got 4B wrong you were gonna get 4C wrong but A for effort always do your best figure it out okay so I had to use this formula had to resort to it I couldn't think of any other way but I haven't seen anyone else pointed out that this is incorrect or wrong so I assume this is the right answer and in this case we require 10 point one milliliters all right i did the calculations i'll do the calculations right now here again we know where we got 0 0.0128 times 5.5 divided by 0. Oh wait where'd it go oh come on 0 0.0 times 5.5 divided by 0 0.01 there we go 10.1 and now for c Oh my gosh, this tripped this tripped me up, this tripped a lot of people up. I forgot to change the final volume to 5 milliliters because that's the final one. So it has to be 5 milliliters. So if we do the process all over again, so 0 0.00125, but what? 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 Okay, ignore that. Times 5. Okay, enter. And then divided by 0 0.001. One, you already know the answer. It's 9 thing and that's what we get as the final answer and so yeah that's essentially it just pause and see read the explanation if need be this confused me this confused a lot of people and that's why i'm making this video hope you enjoy um now for more of the extra stuff this is if you are too lazy to read the pdf so essentially um this is the uh this is like the recommended range of ul this is how you would turn and adjust it based on what increment this will take a long while if you're changing it by that so i'm not really too sure of the increment you will but who knows who cares okay so this is more of the tip uh immersion depth so you can literally stab it into something well don't stab it into your sample like you want to jab somebody but you gotta slightly hover it over the sample make sure it's immersed you can do it from an angle if you're afraid it's gonna jump out and bite on you like screaming cheese but that's how it wants to be done with the tip okay for different um pipettes there are different mechanical ways to remove it such as the press such as the pull such as the drop it's weird and then there's the whole trouble of shooting thing okay so basically if you were to write a lab report and you had to give like resulting conclusions such as like what could have gotten in the way of the lab if it was like leaky like loose shaft worn off seal any of these, like any of these you see here, don't do it. Trust me, don't do it, okay? Here are a couple of other reasons, like liquid sticking to the tip, viscosity reduces accuracy. The others may not make sense, like whatever. But don't mention human error or any of these. Because if you say any of these, you'll immediately think it's human error. And nobody likes that. So immediately think of something else. Do not use this as your reasoning. And yes. PDF is not in the description. I don't know how to link it in the description. I hope you see it somehow. For more details, refer to the uh, manual. And yeah, this is about it. I hope you enjoyed the video.